What's up, everybody? So here we are in the 16th Xamarin Android tutorial. And in this tutorial, what we're going to be looking at is link again, like we were in the last tutorial. Okay, but this time we're going to be filtering data, not so much filtering out data using link. So as an example, let me show you. So notice that when we click on a certain header that it will then be sorted in ascending or descending order. And this is nothing that's that's too new with any data grid. Any data grid by default comes with some kind of sorting. Usually when you click on here, something will come up and, and indicate that it's, it's now sorted in ascending or if you click again, now descending or ascending order. So the different orders as you click. And all we're doing here is we're just gonna add that functionality using link. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go into our main AXML file. And each of our text view, which each is a header, if you remember, we're going to want to add an ID. And we're going to want to add that ID because we're going to want to reference this now in code, okay? So let's do that for each one. And we will call it txt header and then whatever it's applicable to. So first name, come into here. Last name, and I messed up right there. This one will be H. And last, the gender. Okay, so now we have IDs to them in our designer file. Okay, so let's go ahead and rebuild it so that the IntelliSense will pick it up when we reference it in code. And here we're going to want to add some variables. So each text view. Last name. Want age and last we're going to want to text you to reference the gender header. Okay. Let me go ahead and fix this. Alrighty. So now that we have that, now we want to come into here and we're going to want to find the views by ID. Okay. And we need to grab the names that we gave them in the designer file. Last name. And age. and gender. Okay, so now that we have our references, we will now want to go ahead and register the click events for each one, okay? So each time it's clicked, we want to have a method that is called depending on what header is clicked, all right? And you should be catching on this by now with C sharp. So you would do dot click, which is an event that we want to subscribe to. And here it generated our event, our method. Okay. So let's do the same exact thing. But for every other one. Okay. 
And we'll go ahead and copy and paste this just to save some time. Copy this one, copy this one, copy that one. All right. And next we're gonna to want to have three more methods because for each one, okay? And we'll come down here, copy the first part, copy the whole thing, and then take it back over here, okay? And the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is the same thing for each one. Come back over here, copy that, and copy the whole method name back over there. And this is just to save us some video time that you guys aren't sitting here just watching me bang on the keyboard. There we go. And here. Okay, so now we have subscribed to all of our events. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're going to want to implement each one of these, okay? So first, let's go ahead and implement the first name. Okay, so when the user clicks on the first name, we want it to sort by that, all right? And we're gonna do it much like the one in the last tutorial, so the link query is gonna be a little different, okay? So we're going to call it filtered friends, okay? And then up here, we're gonna want to actually add a few more variables, okay? And what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna have a bowl and we're gonna call it M uh, first name ascending, okay? And we're gonna to wanna to do that same thing for each one, okay? And what this is going to do is this is gonna be keeping track of whether they're in ascending or descending order and whatever they are, we'll wanna do the opposite, okay? So when the user clicks again, if it's in ascending order, we want to now order it by descending and vice versa, okay? So age ascending and M gender ascending. All right, so now that we have those, we'll come back down to our first click event. And then we'll now check, we'll say if M first name ascending, so if it's ascending, or I'm sorry, uh, if, it, if it is ascending, then we want to actually descend it, okay? So let's do that. So let's to make it a little more clear. We'll say if it's not ascending, ascend. If not, do this, okay? And it really doesn't matter too much on how we look at it as long as we're toggling between the two, okay? So we'll want to do from friend in our friends list, okay? And then here we'll want to order by friend dot first name, okay? And that's the difference. We just want to order by first name, okay? So it's not ascending, which means it's in descending order, or yet it, or maybe it just hasn't been. You know, the first time it's, it hasn't been ascended or descended, it's just in an, in an order that we put it in, okay? So either way, and then we'll wanna select friend. And same, we want to also put it to a list, okay? And that's all there is to it, okay guys? So here we'll want to refresh the list view, all right? And the way we do that is we just reinitialize the adapter that the list view that the list views adapter is attached to all right so this is a context resource layout row and then filtered friends okay and then we'll do the adapter now equals this new adapter okay and the last thing we want to do here is we just want to outside of the if statement, 
we'll have an if or else. And then outside of that, we're always, we're always going to want to toggle between the two. Okay, so now it'll do the next thing once it's, cl once it's clicked again, okay? So all we have to do here now, so if it's not ascending, then this is going to make it an ascending order. However, this if it is ascending, then all we want to do is you want to actually just add this little keyword called descending, which you guessed it. We'll just make the, we'll filter it by descending order. Okay. So that's all that we want to do here. And now let's go ahead and just save some time. We'll go ahead and we will copy and paste that here, here, and here. Okay. And the next thing, the, the last thing that we want to do in, inside of these methods is we just need to change around the variables now. Okay. So we'll do, so the last name ascending is for the last name, which means we need to change that here. We need to change that here. And then finally we want to order by the last name since the user clicked on the last name now, and we want to change that here. Okay. So that'll do that for that. And then now let's do the same thing just for the left, the next two. So this is the age, change it here, here, and we want to order by age. All right. And last but not least, we'll do the same thing for the gender here, change it here. And we'll want to order by gender. All right. All right. So there we go. All right. So let's go ahead and run this now and make sure that everything is working the way that we expect it to. Although I am, I am guessing that there is going to be some sort of problem, a problem that I ran into when I was building the initial, the initial application. Okay. So yeah. So as you can see, when I clicked on it, first of all, it didn't sort it and the, the keyboard popped up. Okay. And that's because the member, the edit text is essentially behind, or in this case, maybe in front of the, of here, but we just have the alpha set to zero. So it's not registering the clicks because it, it's not, there's something in front of it. And then what's in front of it is the search bar. Okay. Even though we can't see it, but that's just because the alpha is set to zero. If you guys remember that. Okay. So in order to fix this, it's not too bad. The first thing we want to do is we want to first put M container, which is remember just a linear layout that will, that holds the list view. Okay. And we want to bring that to the front. And the way you do that is here, M container bring to front. Okay. So let's go ahead and run it now and see what happens. Okay, so what happened was the application started and the keyboard came up right away. Okay, but let's see if it's at least working here. All right, so now we got this working and it's registering the clicks the way we expect it to. However, the keyboard came up right away when we didn't even call the search method. So that's kind of annoying. Now, the way to fix that is to first go back into the main and there's probably a few different ways to fix this, but the easiest way that I found was just to come into the, the main designer file and find the edit text component, scroll all the way down, or you can do this in the source code, of course, and set this to invisible. Okay. So now that it's set into invisible, it will no longer get called and grab focus. For some reason, when I try to clear focus, before it actually grabbed the focus, it was still calling it. So once I set it to invisible, they fixed that problem. And now that we set that into invisible, we're going to want to set it to visible at one point. Okay. And the way we do that to, to make sure that everything's still working the way it should is on this guy. 
And this is, remember, the event that's called when the actual search icon on the top right is called. Okay? So all we want to do here is change this visibility to visible. Okay? So whenever it's clicked, it'll, it'll become visible again. And it'll still fade in and out because its alpha will be changed accordingly. But this makes sure that it's that's basically back visible, okay? So let's go ahead and run it one more time. And we'll make sure that all the bugs are kinked out. All right, so, okay, that looks good. Nothing, nothing came up, the keyboard didn't come up or anything. Let's make sure that this is still working. All right. So it's sorting in ascending or descending order, which is what we want. So great there. We'll make sure that this is still working fine. This is still coming up, going down. Make sure that we can still search within it. Looks good. All right, cool. So everything looks good here. And we now have a couple different ways that the user can search their data, all right? Quickly and efficiently. So that's the key, is, is that they can do that quickly and efficiently. All right, so everything is, is, is a good to go. And one thing to know is if you want to keep this, see like, you know, if you want to close it, right now I have it to where the search filtered information will still stay here even when you close it, okay? Now you can have it to where when you close, this will disappear, you can clear it, and then in clearing it, it will bring up the data back up, okay? And this is just one of the things that you have to decide as a programmer what you wanna do. Do you want to let the user search for something and then clear up some more room to have to, to, to give them to search, uh, to look for their search data? Or do you want to clear it and you know bring them back here? So this is basically just this is just a preference that that you know you would have to choose the many things that you have to choose from from doing when you're programming applications like this and you know what's best for the user what's going to be more user friendly and all that good stuff but i decided just to leave it and hide it and nothing happens until you come back into here and then of course erase the data okay so just to note that but that that's it for link so far what we're going to be looking at with that and i hope you have a a good general grasp of what you can do with it and maybe you got a whole bunch of other ideas floating in your head now of different things that you can do and and that's the whole goal here is just to kind of kind of start you off and and you know then you just start having ideas manifesting in your head and and you go from there you know so uh, in the next tutorial what I want to do is I'm going to want to look into doing some re uh, rest APIs and working with them and I know I mentioned in a couple of tutorials but I wanted to get this link out of the way and focus on that so for those of you guys that are waiting for that um, I'm going to be working on that and hopefully in the next tutorial I can start working on showing you guys how to use you know some web requests to to reach out to servers and get some data and bring it back and specifically images uh, because those are those are a little more tricky than of course just text files our text uh, data type so we'll we'll give you a we'll be looking at that so just to give you guys a heads up on that um, look for that out in the next few tutorials okay so thanks for watching guys